Start date, 31st of the 3rd, 2024. I will be your captain as we play Starship Simulator, a game that's currently in Kickstarter and you can back it right now. So yes, this game is Kickstarter and when I saw this, I admit I'm a geek. I'm a true geek. I love Star Wars. I love Star Trek. I love all things space. I will never get to go to space. But you know what? Maybe this game can take me one step closer to this. So I have backed this. And look at this currently. There's 3,000 backers. 3,000 backers and 19 days to go. And I've not played this at all. But I saw a video of this. I saw a preview of this. And I thought, holy hell, I've got to do this. So this is a bonus video. We're on this channel at the Gentleman's Pixel Club. I will show you what this game is all about. And I will show you for the first time. Because here it is, loaded in. Oh, and consider clicking on subscribe in the alert if you'd be so good to. But I've never played it at all and I've fired it up for the first time. And here we are. You know, the sound, the music, it makes you just want to dive into this. So, this game is probably unlike anything you've ever seen before. It's a simulator more than a game. Um, and you look at the details, you look at the credits, you look at the introduction videos that the authors have done on this. I believe it's a man and wife that's actually doing this. Um, and yes, Men and women do still get married together. And the, the, these people here um, have created something that looks so gorgeous. You know, you could just sit there and look at this planet, perhaps planet Earth go by, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do a start new mission or a training module. We're gonna do a training module. So, we got these two we can do here by the looks. The tutorial missions are standalone and will not affect your existing save game. So bridge scanning and navigation, or engineering cold start sequence let's start this one so let's start the ship I, I believe it's starting the ship launch load in Magellan class and look at that it looks like it looks like it belongs out of Star Trek so it's building the ship here and this game is procedurally generated from what I read you know I've backed this at 100 of your UK Earth pounds because we're soon going to be in space this is due to launch in March 2025 oh and look at this Welcome it looks to gorgeous the class cold start training module my name is Ava I'm the UN Space Fleet's AI voice assistant in this module we will review the correct procedure for starting up the ship's fusion reactor and then supplying power to the vessel the ship is currently in a cold and dark state, so for your safety, I have taken the liberty of turning on your torch for you. Thank you. To begin, follow the waypoints on your HUD to the lower floor of the reactor room. Okay, so we've obviously got to follow the HUD here. But yes, this game is on Kickstarter and lovingly designed through CAD and everything else like this. Apparently, all the circuitry works even behind the panels um, and everything has a function. Obviously, there's a lot of logic built in behind it. They're not real cables or anything because we're in a simulated world. But just to look at this, you know, it looks gorgeous. And um, you can download. This, this is available. The demo is available from Steam at the moment. So I'm playing this on Steam. All right, so let's walk here. Okay, we're bobbing around a little bit. Look at the reflections. Holy hell, this is good. Okay, so it wants us to go this way. Lovely. Let's go this way. Okay, apparently in the game all the door panels work. Everything works as it should. Alright, okay, we're in some kind of storage room here. And remember, this is due to be released effectively in a year's time. But, you know, what you see is... Hopefully, hopefully, going to be quite impressive. And this is not a horror game. Nothing is going to be jumping out. Or at least I don't believe it's a horror game. No, the ship is turned off. So we, we, we've got to be going towards where that waypoint is. So here we are. We're 16, 14, 12, 10 meters away. All right. And it wants us to go here. And then down here. Thank God it's got this HUD. You know, if it didn't have this HUD, I'd be in all kinds of difficult wonder around for you. Where do we go? Here's another. Oh, look at this. Oh, we shouldn't be going down here. Yeah, but look. Oh, my word. You know, we're in the dark. We're on a ship that's been powered off, which you've seen a thousand times in Star Trek, Voyager, Enterprise, Next Generation where things go wrong. There's nothing wrong here at the moment. We just got to start the ship. And apparently there's NPCs in this. You can play multiplayer. Um, there's going to be AI crew as well. And the NPCs will have functions and job life. Here we are. are we in the right place now? Follow the waypoints on your HUD. I think we are in. Oh, here we are. No, we've got to go down these stairs. 
<gasps> a fire extinguisher. As you can see, the reactor is offline, and none of the ship's systems are powered. No. Our first task is to provide power to the engineering decks, so let's make our way to the Stark capacitor's room. No, I'm Follow looking the at the fire extinguisher. Stop talking! Computer. I'm looking at the fire extinguisher. Oh, you could pick it up. Okay. Oh, oh, look, look, look. I've got feet and I've got hands. Can I throw it? Yes. Oh, look at it bounce. Oh, this is good. Oh, we can zoom in as well. So right mouse button zooms you in. All right, okay, let's go. Let's go working. Let's go walking. Uh, where do we, we're going to go this way, this way, this way. As long as that number is getting lower, this is good. Okay, oh, have I gone the wrong way? No, I should maybe. This, I say that not all the rooms are going to be furnished and stuff like this because this is just the beginning. But yeah, we're going on a journey. And this is a first impression, a first direction. I've never played this before. You know, I've read about it. I've seen a couple of videos on it. I saw the IGN video, which looks phenomenal. Um, it's going to be, oh, and here we are, here we are. As its so, name suggests, the startup distributor routes energy from the start capacitors to the engineering decks and also provides the reactor with the power it needs to create the initial fusion reaction. You'll notice the device is already powered because the start capacitors are fully charged. Let's go ahead and get some lights on by connecting all of the breakers. Start with the G-deck breakers, as indicated. So, apparently, in this game, all these breakers, everything, all the connections work and do something. If there's a panel there, it will have functionality, and it will be there to do something, to achieve something. So, we can't read what's on the screen very well at the moment, but if we zoom in, look at that. You can read it as clear as day. All right. So, this one, it wants us to connect that. So, click. Do we just touch it? Yes, we do. Oh, is there a test? How do we do the test? Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, awesome! Um, okay, let's just keep it right mouse and, and clicks there, and we do this. So right mouse is keeping me zoomed in, and look at these little lights come on! You know, it's the little details. And finally, Boom. the reactor supply itself. Can we test these yet? No. Test no. Excellent. Now we can see what we're doing. You can go ahead and turn off your torch by pressing T. Hang on. The reactor these... controls should now be online. So let's walk back to the reactor room and take a look. Right, torch off. Oh, look, it's red now. Oh, look at this. <gasps> oh. All right, but if you zoom in on here, I'm sure I saw these numbers change. If I disconnect that, yes, they do. Look at this, the level of detail here, the live load, the voltage, and the amperature. You know what? This is going to be a complicated game, but we're just going to connect that. Okay, the reactor control should now be online, so let's walk back to the reactor room and take a look. Okay. Oh, look. Maps. Oh, you are here. Oh, yeah, the level of detail. The level of detail. Close. Oh, do we open it? Let's turn that up. I'm sure I heard the hissing of the doors. Oh, you do. You've got slidey, slidey doors. Okay, don't know what that does. All right, so let's try. Door locks. All right, so open. No, it doesn't open. All right, let's put something wrong in. Unlock. Incorrect code. Ha ha. Okay. Uh, what do we do? What did we do? My memory. 
Oh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Oh, yes. What is this room? Is this going to the throne room? The throne room of the gentleman. Distribute a G-ring, one forward. Okay, spare. What is this? Let's connect you. Okay, I can't connect you, but can I turn you off? I turn you off. Okay. I can't interact with those yet, but remember, we are playing. We are playing a Alpha Tech Demo 2 of this. Oh, here we are. These ones we can turn off. I turned our lights off. Oh no, I've broken them. Alright, perhaps I shouldn't have turned those off. Yeah, let's turn things off. I'm sure I've ha <laughs> I'm sure those stairs were lit up. Never mind. Oh, something else, something else. No, that's just the door. Right, where are we now? You are here. Okay, and we are headed where are we where are we meant to be going? React controls. Oh, you can run as well. All right, so hold shift key down. Let's me run. Ah, okay. I've got to go. I've got to go into that room there. Oh, reactor controls. Look this at this. This console displays the reactor's vital information and provides you with full control over the reactor and its subsystems. On the left-hand side, we have the coolant section, which shows the liquid helium coolant flow and the condition of the magnetic field coils. On the right-hand side, we have the electrical section, which shows the reactor's main electrical bus, along with its input and output feeds. You could jump. In the center, we have the reactor's main display, where we can control the fusion reaction itself. As you can see from all of these alarms, it would be impossible to initiate a stable fusion reaction under the current conditions, so let's I don't fix know. that. The first thing we need to do is supply power to the reactor's internal bus, so go ahead and switch the reactor to startup mode by pressing the indicated button. Which is not there. Oh, damn it, where is it? You know, I've clearly jumped ahead, because you can jump. Oh yeah, it's got to be here. So what have we got? Voltage isolate startup. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, you can move with the zoom as well. Yeah, the, the, the DL here, the DL here is really good. Great. Now that the reactor has power, we can activate the vacuum pump to start purging the confinement chamber. Okay, so I guess here, vacuum pump, there we go. The chamber pressure should now be dropping. To sustain a fusion reaction, we need an internal pressure of less than 10 nanopascals. While we wait for the confinement chamber to reach its target pressure, let's take care of the reactor's fuel and coolant supplies. Exit the reactor room via the door behind you and follow the waypoints on your HUD. All right, we're going to go the way it says here. You know what? Regardless of the graphical achievement and how this looks, you know, it's gorgeous to just walk around. You know, think of the work that's gone in behind designing the back end playability. This is way more than just start stop. These storage tanks hold all of the cryogenic fluids that are used to both fuel and cool the reactor. All four tanks are currently empty, so our first task is to begin the filling process. Okay. Let's start with the helium coolant. Head behind the storage tanks to access the helium cryo cooler. You know what, you can imagine in real life, yeah, I just want you to go to back there to do the helium cryo cooler. It'd be like, what? What are you talking about? All right. The cryo coolers use a process called magnetic refrigeration to convert gas into a cryogenic fluid before pumping it into the connected storage tank. Start up the helium cryo cooler now by using the indicated control on its user interface. On, there we go. Excellent. Boom, there you go. Now, if you turn around, you'll find the helium refill valve located on the back wall. These valves control the flow of gases harvested by the ship's gas collection hardware, which is located on the underside of the forward hull. 
Go ahead and open the helium supply valve now to begin supplying the cryo cooler with helium gas. It's just the level of detail that you've got here as well. I mean, look at the reflections on anything. This is phenomenal. You know, I can't believe. If you turn around I, I can't believe. The display I'm in to the a virtual tank. starship. Oh, you what should happened? be able to confirm that the tank is now filling with fluid. We now need to perform the same sequence of events for the other three tanks. Head over to the helium-3 cryocooler next. Helium-3 is the first of two fuels used in the fusion reaction. Oh god, I haven't before, been listening. Power up the device using its user interface. And now oh, there we open go. the helium-3 refill valve behind you to start filling its associated tank. Next, we need to start filling the two deuterium tanks. So let's head over to the other side of the room. Look at this. Oh, it changes. Is that filling up? The fill level is getting high. I'm sure that I'm sure. I'm sure that detail is. I'm sure this scion bit here, this blue bit here, is getting higher. Holy hell! And we, yeah, this is just starting the damn ship. Okay. Oh, where are we going? Where are we go? Where are? We? Oh, where are we going? How do we get to you? Okay, yeah, look at that one. That one's empty. So let's go over to the other side of the room. Right, hang on, we are Deuterium, on Deuterium, also known as heavy hydrogen, is the second of the two fusion fuels. We store double the amount of deuterium compared to helium-3. Oh, here we because are. Deuterium also fuels the reactor's neutral beam injectors. Online. As before, turn on the first deuterium cryocooler. I think we've done it. Or have we? I don't know. There's so many buttons. Okay. Oh, look, they're filling up now. They're filling up now. Oh, look at that. I have no idea whether I'm doing this right. I'm... Is that all well, that's getting higher? Okay, I, I'm really... What do we need to do? Online, online, oh, offline. Helium coolant tank. Helium fuel tank. Oh. Good lord, there's so much. No, they're open as well. Well, it's not that, clearly. This is just glor- oh, look at the signs. This is just glorious to be walking around looking at this. And yes, this is a first playthrough and stuff like that. Oh, hang on. Cryo caller. And now the first deuterium refill valve behind oh. you. Next, turn on the second deuterium cryo cooler. Okay. And now the second deuterium refill valve. So I'd already pressed some of those buttons before, clearly okay, in the wrong order. All four storage tanks should now be filling with cryogenic fluids. For our next task, we now need to engage the cryo pumps in order to start supplying the reactor with everything it needs. Make your way around to the other side of the tanks and locate the deuterium tank outflow valve. Oh, here we are. Okay. Open the deuterium outflow valve to begin supplying fluid to its connected cryo pump. Next, power on the pump itself using the button indicated on its user. Excellent. That's half of the fuel mix taken care of. Now head over to the helium-3 tank outflow valve so we can complete the fuel supply. All right. As before, begin by opening the helium-3 outflow valve. Helium coolant tank. Helium-3, there we go. Well, they're kind of already there because we've and pushed them already. The helium three. Perfect. All we have to do now is take care of the coolant flow. Head over to the helium tank outflow valve. God. Now open the helium outflow. And finally, power on the. There we go. I took a long time over this, didn't I? With all the fuel and coolant it needs. 
follow the waypoints back to the reactor room, where we have just a few more valves to open. <laughs> See, this is the, oh, what is this? Oh, that's one of those sides there. This is way more fun than just go. You know, and this can be a multiplayer game if you're from what you read as well. And, you know, you, this is literally my first impressions of it. And you get the complete video, uncut, unedited, bang, there we go. And we will have another go at the other mission as well. But where am I going? Head back to... Head... Uh, oh, good Lord, I've just got to go in here, haven't I? I'm running around the outside thinking, where am I going? And basically, I just need to turn left. There we go. To complete the coolant loop, open the helium inflow valve to start flowing coolant through the magnetic field coils. This is it. Oh, hang on, one more. Now make your way around to the opposite side of the reactor to complete the fuel supply process. First, open the deuterium inflow valve. And now open the helium three inflow valve. Oh, look at this in the back. Look at that. Look at this detail there. OK, great. Let's head over to the reactor controls and take a look at the coolant display. As you can see, we now have coolant flowing into the reactor. Good. This has begun the process of cooling down the magnetic field coils, which must reach temperatures below 20 Kelvin in order to become superconductive. Oh, it's so techy, Star Trek Once the coils have reached their target temperature, you will be able to engage the magnetic field. Below 20 Kelvin, all right. I guess we wait. Here we go. No, I'm looking at the temperature thing just there. Here. Wait for the fuel coils to reach our target temperature. Yeah, we've got nothing else to push. It wants us to wait. It's telling us to wait. Sonic, can we do anything? Okay, so electrical is going in. That's going to here. That's half work in here. Come on, come on. Once the cores have reached their target temperature, you'll be able to charge the magnetic field. Wait for the field cores to reach their target temperature. Start. Okay, I can't do anything with these yet. I guess we've just got to wait. Let's have a... Is there anything over here? Oh, here we are. Look, we, we click on this. So this is a toggle between both of those for whatever that is. Let's test you. Low load fault. All right, I generally, generally am a little bit stumped here. You know, I don't think there's anything more we can push in here you know open all of those are open we've got happy lights there oh hang on open right good good right let's come back and have another look at that screen as i walk the wrong way around the reactor room to get to it Come on, we almost started okay, our starship. Oh. You can now power up the field coils. Oh, okay. 
What are the field calls? With a solid vacuum established, the field coils powered up, and fuel flowing into the reactor, you are now free to initiate the fusion reaction. Congratulations, you have now successfully started the fusion reactor. For safety, the reactor automatically starts up at only 10% of its rated power. This means high voltage systems, such as the FTL drive, will be underpowered until you increase the reactor output. Let's resolve that now. Increase the power level to 100% using the indicated controls. Oh, engage. You'll notice that you can increase the power beyond 100%, but doing so for an extended period will overheat the reactor, causing damage and forcing an uncontrolled shutdown. Look at this. Okay, we now need to provide power to the rest of the ship. Have With we not done that yet? powering itself, you can go ahead and switch the internal bus mode from startup to supply. Here we go, here we go. Back here. Perfect. If we now head around to the opposite side of the reactor, the reactor output distributor should now be powered up. Oh, this device I didn't distributes the reactor's see this. output to the ship's high voltage systems, which are in fact the only systems powered directly by the reactor. The rest of the ship is powered by 48 individual battery arrays, which we now need to begin charging using the reactor's output. Go ahead and connect all five of the. Excellent. If you turn to your left, you'll What's see the say? five high voltage oh, distributors are now coming online. Look at this! Look at this! Head over to the main battery distributor. Look at this! It's all, oh my word! It's all lining up. Head over to the main battery. Alright, where, where's that? Oh, here it is. This device takes the high voltage reactor feed and distributes it to each of the eight battery rooms on F deck. Go ahead and connect all eight output breakers. One, two, Three, four. Perfect. The battery arrays should now be charging, but we should perform a visual inspection to make sure. What? The Follow detail. The points on your HUD to port battery room one. Uh, okay. Port battery room one. Oh, up here. Up here. Look at this curves. Oh, 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 we did turn off those lights somewhere, didn't we, on those stairs a little while ago? Okay, uh, where am I going? Where am I? No, how? How? Okay, this has all got a little bit. Torch. There we go. Oh look, 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 habitation lower. Oh, plant, oh my god, look, plants, greenery. You know, this is, I don't, if you're new to this channel, and welcome if you do, I don't usually gush and ooh and ah over everything, but as a techie, as a geek, as a sci-fi geek, this is just fucking wonderful. It's absolutely, the Swift Swamp is absolutely brilliant. It really is. Oh my word. Friggin wonderful, that's the words. This is incredible. Am I still going the right way? Huh. <laughs> A work in progress poster. Poster even. No, I'm not going the right way, all right. Let's go back down here. We need to be heading towards you. I got lost in the dark with my enthusiasm, sir. Look at things. I can't believe it. I'm lost in my own starship. Here we are. Alright, no, no. I do think we needed to go up here. Right, here we are. Here we are. No, 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 no. It's underneath us. Damn it. There we were. Right, down. This floor. This way. I 
I don't know why I clicked on that because it's there and we can click on things all right here we go here we go go we oh look at this the electrical oh. supply on Magellan class starships is divided into four isolated quadrants forward aft port and starboard for increased redundancy each quadrant is powered by two physically isolated battery rooms just like this one should the battery arrays in one room cease to function for any reason, the arrays in the second room will continue providing power to that particular quadrant. Similarly, power to one quadrant can be lost entirely, without impacting the supply to the remaining three quadrants. OK, let's take a look at one of the individual battery arrays. On the left-hand side of the user interface, you have controls for managing the input and output breakers. And in the centre, you have controls and information relating to this array's 10 solid-state battery cells. If we did everything correctly, all of the cells should now be slowly charging up. They yeah. are. For the next step, we now need to connect each of the eight battery rooms to the ship's electrical grid. Oh, holy hell. This task will take us into the ship's labyrinth of maintenance tunnels, so be sure to watch your head. Follow the waypoints on your HUD to port battery aggregator 1. Okay, so if you ever find yourself on a starship, it's going to take a while to get the thing started. You know, we can't do this in a hurry. We cannot do this in a hurry. Okay, here we are. Here we are. Each battery room has a corresponding battery aggregator, just like this one. These devices perform load balancing and also combine each room's six individual battery arrays into a single high voltage feed. Go ahead and connect the output breaker now which will connect this set of battery arrays to the ship's electrical grid. OK, one down and seven more to go. Next, head over to port battery aggregator 2. As before, connect this aggregator's output breaker. Oh, this is easy. That takes care of the port battery rooms. Let's make our way to the forward quadrant next. I just, the level of detail here is, is phenomenal. I'm generally blown away. I'm generally blown away. This is friggin' awesome, not the naughty word I said for pure emotion of how cool this is. Go ahead and connect the output, and the same again on forward battery aggregator 2. This is going to be a whole game Onwards to the starboard where you can travel through space and do other bits of wonderful things. And you know what, even with what we've got here, even just giving me this here, you know, you, you just would be happy wandering around, playing, experiencing this. And if we did all connect the output break and the second starboard aggregator. If they put this in VR, imagine what we will have there. You know, yes we've done a lot around just walking, clicking, Almost but done. it's the, the environment, it's the visuals, it's the experience this is creating. Right, okay, we're all done. Just the aft quadrant to go. All right, okay, here we are. Let's run. We can run. I forgot we can run. Here we go. No. Connect up the first aft aggregate and finally the second aft aggregator. Okay, perfect. Oh. All 48 of the ship's battery arrays are now connected to the electrical grid. All we have to do now is supply power to the ship's remaining decks and then perform a few cleanup tasks. We can do most of that from the reactor room, so let's head there now. Follow the waypoints on your HUD to the forward deck distributor. So before you think, dear Lord, there's so much to be doing here. Um, when you play this game, um, from what I understand having watched the video by one of the authors of this um, the NPCs will actually do a lot of the tasks you could just set yourself up to be a, a, a civilian living in this ship and you don't have to do anything um, you know you, you can be you can go as in depth with this game as you want to each deck in a given quadrant is fed by simulator a deck sorry which takes the total electrical load of that quadrant and then load balances it between the two connected battery aggregators Go ahead and connect the output breakers for all seven decks in this quadrant. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Come on. Five, six, seven, 
Now head the over lights. to the starboard deck distributor and do the same. Okay, here we go, here we go. I'm sure I heard a different noise there. A little the lights and everything. Oh, it's so good. The level to detail on the graphics is just outstanding. So I've backed this and at the hundred pound. Oh. I've backed this at the hundred pound level. Um, so that we can have a custom planet and my custom planet an alien race or whatever it's going to be is going to be dedicated to the gentleman's pixel club this channel quite what we do i don't quite know what i'll do here but you will be able to find and finally, you know hopefully something dedicated to this channel within the game depending on how it lets you customize all right okay let's go here This should be the last one, I think. I hope. Oh, we missed one. Hello. Right, let's turn them off and on again. Perfect. All quadrants on every deck now have power available from the ship's main battery arrays. Mm. This Your is obviously an alpha. Ever, the ship the is color. Under emergency lighting that should be. Because F and G decks are still using the Stark capacitor's supply. To resolve this, oh, here we, go. we simply have to switch the four quadrant distributors on F and G decks over to the main battery feed. Oh, more things Head to over flip. To the G deck forward quadrant distributor. Here we go. Each deck has four of these devices, one for each quadrant. They are fed by the corresponding deck distributor. Go ahead and switch this quadrant over to the main battery feed. That's better. Now we can really see what we're doing. Hey! Ha <laughs> ha! Head over to the starboard quadrant distributor and do the same. Look! Different lights. Do not dust up. Oh, look at... Oh, my word. Yeah, we know we've got to do this, but I'm sorry. Oh, blue lights now as well. Different lights. <laughs> what have... How... What... Was that the fire extinguisher I threw earlier? How did that end up bouncing there? Just look at this. You know, and we, we, we haven't done anything meaningful yet apart from power on the ship. And now the after quadrant distributor. Uh, okay, we're, oh, there we are. And finally, the port quadrant distributor. Uh, okay. Oh, there we are. That's G deck taken care of. Let's do the same for F deck. Head upstairs to the F deck forward quadrant distributor. Oh, did that fall over? Okay. A few before. more switches. And now the same on the starboard quadrant distributor. And again on the aft quadrant distributor. This is why in multiplayer games you have many people finally, to help you do this. Quadrant distributor. Or NPCs. Well done. That's the main objectives of the cold start procedure complete. Yes. But we have one final bonus task to perform. Oh, brilliant. Follow the waypoints on your HUD up to the bridge, and we'll make the ship flight ready. Oh, okay. I don't know how big this is, but oh, you could probably get stupidly, stupidly lost. Oh, where am I going? Oh my word. It's huge. It's friggin' huge. Oh, look at this. We're going to go up there. Okay, so it's just up the stairs.
you know, I cannot imagine. Ho oh, ho ho, look at that. I cannot imagine the time and effort and development work that's gone into this. This is just beautiful. You know, I'm using a lot of the same words here, but I'm I'm really generally blown away. Oh, look at this. This is like, uh, this is like, oh my love. If they put this in VR, oh holy hell. This is like, oh, oh hang on. F to sit. Oh look at, oh you swivel around as well. Oh, oh you can wheel yourself around. Oh, you can have wheelchair races in multiplayer. But you know what? This is the room that you see in Star Trek such a lot where they sit and they talk. Does it have a name? Oh look, room lighting. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> the level, the detail here. Holy mother of hell. This is great. And look, I could take my chair. I could take my chair. You know, I, I this is probably gonna <laughs> it bump look at that, it bumps on the steps as well. Now let's see how easy it lets you ride up the steps. Ha oh fuck. Sorry, swear they've done it. They have thought of and what is that? They thought of all kinds of is that a lift? That's a lift. Or something. Can I? How do I get into that? How, uh, damn it, I want to get into that torch. I'm sure that's a lift. Oh, hang on. Okay. I've got off my chair, which we have. That is just awesome that the chair doesn't let you go up there. Oh, here we are. It had. To, I, I was walking through the doors. I was walking through the wrong doors. Go to the bridge. Yes. Oh. You know what? I'm loving this. I am loving this. Captain's office. Oh. Picard's ready room or Picard's office. Where in the Borg. I always remember the scene in First Contact where you had the, and that was the one with the Borg, the brilliant film, where he gets angry and the human lady that he met come in and said, you broke your little ships. Well, there's one of those little ships. There's one of those little ships. So, if we right, if we left click on it, and I think we literally broke our ship. It, it flew away into nothing. Oh, no, I didn't. There it is. There it is. There it is. So let's leave. I don't, I don't know where it went. All right, enough of that. Let's go here. The lights and bridge systems are still turned off, so let's bring everything online. Head over to the ADEC distributor in the engineering alcove. You know what? You don't even want to touch anything. You just want to turn off this torch. You just want to look at the shadows it casts. Yeah, little bug there that needs fixing, but hey ho, yo, we're early game. This is rendering. Look at this. Yeah, it is just so. <laughs> Behold, see the gentleman command his ship. But no, we need to go over here somehow. Here we go. Now go ahead and turn on the bridge lighting. I can't wait to do this. And now power up the bridge system. Oh. Okay, there we go. You have successfully started the fusion reactor, routed power to all of the ship's decks and brought the bridge online into a flight-ready state. This concludes the Magellan-class cold start training module. Good luck, and I hope you'll join me again in future training modules. Absolutely brilliant. Wow, I am blown away. I am truly blown away by this. You know, I'm show I've shown you the gameplay end-to-end, -end, and oh, look, window control, hang on. Off. 
on so that's made it darker this is obviously a work in progress because they put a little sticker by it as well but I guess we can't see out now oh no no it's tint it's tint oh, so when you get to these really bright planets you can change the tin. Oh yeah, but let's turn that off though, because we want to see outside. All right, what else have we got? What else have we got? The captain's chair. Oh, <laughs> we have to do it. Okay, there's no sound playing for yellow alert. Do red alert. That's got to have the klaxons in at some point. Emergency lighting. Oh, yes. <laughs> we can dance. We can dance on the bridge of our ship. Oh, look, it's like in the whole ship. Oh, look at this. Everybody was disco dancing. So now, now we can have chair races under the disco lights of this starship. You know what? I'm wondering if I can... Let's grab our chair. Yes, we can take our chair back up. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so you can't run with this, devs, if you're watching this, and I hope you are. Why not make it so that you can actually go faster in your chair by holding the shift key down? It's stupid. It's silly. It doesn't matter. We're here having fun. Hello, the, the, the real captain's chair. All right, so let's sit down here. Test alien virus. Yeah, no, 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 no. Test condition normal right off we get there what have we got over here bridge shield raise shield lower shield oh hang on something happened over there holy ha oh. I was expecting shields as in, you know, you know, the starship shields. All right. So, here we are. What do we got here? Apparently, you can also rename your ship to how you want. All right, and here we are. This chair here. This must be flight. Oh, all right. So new target, and no, hang on. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Or we want to probably. Okay, so. I guess it's this map in the middle here. New target. Okay. Where's the front seater? This is just so wonderful. Clear target. Ah, uh, nav target. Oh, there's something turning there. It shook a little bit. It shook a little bit. So, um,
So this is our faster than light drive here. We're going fast, we're going fast, we're going fast. For a tech demo, absolutely incredible. don't know where we're going are we going there ah solid we're just flying we are flying but no absolutely great but there's one more thing to do so holy hell 51 minutes 51 minutes into this we have we've got one more demo to play for want of a better word so if we try and go back to the main menu oh good lord I didn't expect this. Customized character. Okay, I'm hiding behind the chair. Right, let's move around. Right, escape. Customized character, that's better. So, first name is the gentleman. Gentleman. Rank. Okay, so these are all, all the levels that you can be. You can be operations, engineering, tactical, or we could just be a civilian. There we go. And our clothes change, so clothing head. T-shirt. Right, appearance, male, female, animations, masculine. Yes. Skin tone. Okay, face desets. Beard style. All the beard in the world. Ah, oh, well, we, we need... Well, that'll, that'll do. All right, and then we'll save. Then escape. Customize ship. Oh, look at this. Oh, hang on. Walls floor. All right. Oh, good Lord. All right, cancel. So the first thing we need to do is go and turn off the world of disco. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, no, not disco mode. We want normal. There we go. All right, so we're in our bridge. Escape, customize ship. Organization prefix, well, it's gonna be the GPC. And the ship's name is gonna be the Gentleman. Gentleman's. yes good it takes it all now through the power of what i've got in front of me i think currently our subscribers because i thought what we've got in front of me but no i couldn't see is one two one two twelve twelve so that's that seasonal decorations oh okay we've got halloween save <laughs> it puts pumpkins there you know what you're flying through space and the most important thing is to have pumpkins and let's just check we are still flying through space I guess we are I guess we are we're lost all right okay let's bring that up again see uh, customized ships seasonal decorations Christmas save ah yes deck the halls with boughs of holly welcome to the Christmas gentlemen's pixel club Starship and look in the windows you could just see the clouds in the background. Alright, so customize ship walls. Or oh, you could change the colours. Flooring. Ha! <laughs> Wood floor. Ah, oh, yes. Very, very 60s and 70s UI panel. Oh, my word. Right, so what we're doing here, for those of you that don't know, is in days of old, everything was green. So, yeah, you've got green on green there. Let's go and look at... 
<laughs> yes, oh, I like this. I love this. I love this. All right. So, customize ship. Lighting. And there we go. Merry Christmas, one and all. So the Gentleman's Pixel Club in its 1970s um, decorative floor. Let's go. United Nations Space Fleet. That needs to be the... Oh, here we are. No, it does say it. Look at this. Look at this. The Gentleman's Pixel Club 1212. 1,212 of you brilliant subscribers. All right. So... You know what? This is brilliant. This is brilliant. But we, 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 we you know, here we are. You know what? That, that has got to be the screen that I use for for the wallpaper. For this, it has got to be that the gentleman's pixel club. All right. What we need to do now is we're going to have another look at the other demo that it had. So we're going to do a screen, and this is where. I was actually looking to go, um, so quit the main menu. So training modules, bridge scanning and navigation. So that's where I was looking to go till I saw all the customization options that you had there. And remember, this is just the beginning. This game is a year away from being launched, but it is going to be available on Kickstarter. It is available right now. So if you want to be in it to have your own bit of customization, Welcome it to could the be worth Task it. Scanning and navigation training module. My name is Ava. I'm the UN Space Fleet's AI voice assistant. In this module, we will review the correct procedure for identifying targets of interest and then navigating the ship to the desired location. To begin, proceed to the ship's bridge. I have placed some waypoints on your HUD to help you find your way. Let's make it so. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this just looks so good. All right. Welcome to the bridge. This is the ship's nerve center, where you have command and control over any ship system. Right now we're interested in the sensors, so make your way over to that console and take a seat. Dear Lord, where's our Christmas decorations? Customise ship. Okay, they wouldn't, let's turn them off. There we go, that's better. So the Christmas decorations don't carry forward tutorials. But here we are, this sensor console. for scanning space around the ship and highlighting any targets of interest for the command staff. Before we perform any scans, however, let's take a look at the different sensor modes available to us. The Galactic Position Mode makes use of the standard UN Galactic Positioning System and simply shows us our location relative to the Milky Way galaxy. The Stellar Region Mode employs the long-range sensors to detect information about star systems within a 50 light-year radius of the ship. The star system mode uses the short range sensors to provide a more detailed overview of the star system we are currently in with a maximum range of about one light year. Go ahead and press that button now. Okay. Yes, Ava. The range controls allow you to fine tune the display range of the sensors, which makes it easier to focus on particular objects of interest or to gain a high level overview of the current star system. The central panel lists all of the valid objects in range which you can click on to select as a target. Go ahead and click a few different targets now. Oh, here we are, back here. All right, so we can... You'll notice that the target information oh. panel displays more detailed information about your selected target. Once you are happy with your selection, press the send to helm button to make the target coordinates available to the helm console for navigation. Okay, so I'm looking at the target information for Earth, and it's missing one clear thing, one most important fact. On this channel, we talk about the center of the planet, the most important place on the whole planet, and you're missing the planet's capital there, which is Barnsley. Barnsley needs to be mentioned in this target information as the planet's capital, I promise you that. Anyway, what do we, what do, we do? Once you're happy with your selection, send to Helm. All right, so we are going to go to... Da, 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 da. 
Let's go here. Let's go to Mercury. In fact, let's, let's leave our chat. Let's go and have another look. We want to go to Mercury? Do we want to go to Mercury? I don't know. Sod it. We'll go to Mercury. We'll go to Mercury, I think. So, sit here. And we clicked on Mercury. Because we're, we're, near, we're near Earth. We're near Earth. Oh, no. Let's fly into the sun. Here we go. Sensor helm. Now head over to the helm console and take a seat. From here, we will navigate. Let's begin by taking a quick look at the various screens available to the helm. The left-hand display is dedicated to navigation and shows both the ship's current galactic position along with its target destination coordinates. The central display deals with the flight controls themselves, including the FTL system, sublight engines and reaction control thrusters. The right-hand screen features the autopilot controls, toggles for the 3D target like indicators and the ship's navigation lights. OK, let's retrieve the target information from the sensors by pressing the Use Sensor Target button on the navigation panel. Boom. Your target coordinates should now be displayed in this box, which represents your current nav target. The galactic coordinates represent the target's position in the galaxy to the nearest whole light year. The coordinates are relative to the center of our galaxy, the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star. The local coordinates represent the target's position within a star system, the coordinates are relative to the system's center of gravity, which is usually a star, or the Berry Center in multi-star systems. While it is possible to fly the ship manually to any location in the galaxy, let's engage the autopilot for now. So the ship will now automatically turn to face the current nav target, but you will need to manually engage the FTL system in order for us to get underway. Ah, oh, damn it. You can now engage the FTL system when you are ready. While the autopilot is engaged, I will manage the ship's speed and final approach to the target coordinates, so just sit back and enjoy the ride. The FTL system works by compressing space ahead of the ship and then expanding it behind, creating a bubble of warped space with the ship at its centre. The compressed space amplifies the ship's current velocity by a factor of the FTL field strength, so the ship's sublight engines are still used to provide the required thrust. The maximum God, speed of the ship is I'm therefore a combination sunglasses. of the FTL field strength and the thrust output of the sublight engines. Holy hell! For the Magellan class, this is approximately 300 light years per hour. Look okay. at this! It looks like we have arrived at the target coordinates. Now that we've seen what the ship can do over a relatively short distance, let's pick a target that's much further away. Head on over to the sensors console again and take a seat. Oh, didn't turn it on. Right, that's turned on. Oh, look at that. Oh, whoa. So, just messing here, not doing what you're supposed to do. You can see the detail of the fire inside the sun. You know, just by, by 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 changing that, it's still a little bit bright through the shields, but you can do that. And of course, what we can do is obviously we got our reflections everywhere, but there's a shield up somewhere. Here we are, ray shield. A lower shield. You can have just so much fun by by doing silly things here, but no. Right, let's this turn. Time we're going to use the long range sensors. Go ahead and press the stellar region button to view our local stellar neighborhood. All right, okay, so sit down. Try not to burn our eyes. That's a bit bright here. You've got to wear shades, so stellar region. As before, you can use the display range buttons to increase or reduce the number of displayed objects, depending on your needs. If you click between a few of the objects in range, You'll notice that none of them have any detailed information yet. This is because a sensor scan is required. 
Let's take a closer look at our nearest neighbor. Click on Alpha Centauri and then click the Scan Target button. You'll notice that the Target Information panel now gives us a high-level overview of the targeted system, including important data points, such as the extent of the habitable zone. This information can be used to determine if a star system is worth closer inspection. For example, if a planet exists in the habitable zone, you'll need to use the short-range sensors from within the system itself to determine if that planet can truly support life. Select one of the planets in the system that you'd like to take a closer look at, and then press centre helm as we did before. So, which shall we go for? You know what? Let's go for a terrestrial planet, let's go for you. And centre helm. Now return to the helm console and take a seat once again. Press okay. the use sensor target button again on the navigation panel. Yeah, if I can see it. Target. Right, our uh, use sensor, there we are. Now engage the autopilot again to orient. And now engage the FTL system so we can get underway. So we're going to fly through a bit of the sun here. Boom. Our previous journey was merely interplanetary, but we're now leaving the Sol system behind and entering interstellar space. The Milky Way galaxy is a vast and mysterious place where even light takes over four years to reach our nearest stellar neighbour. Thanks to recent breakthroughs in FTL technology, however, we can now make that same journey in around one minute. Even so, at our maximum speed of 300 light years per hour, it will still take over two full weeks to fly from one side of the galaxy to the other. That's a distance in excess of 100,000 light years. Our Here galaxy contains hundreds of billions of star systems that are waiting to be explored, in addition to countless other stellar phenomena that we don't even have names for yet. This ship and her crew are tasked with exploring distant new worlds, seeking out new life in all of its diversity, and making peaceful first contact with any intelligent species that are encountered along the way. The galaxy can also be a dangerous and unforgiving place, so as we tread cautiously into the unknown, we should remain mindful of any potential dangers lurking in the dark. We're not far from our destination now, so sit back and enjoy the view while I handle the final approach. This game is literally Star Trek. Here we go. Look at that. And there's our planet. At night. Okay, here we are. You are now looking at an entirely new world, bathed in the light of another star. At this distance, our home is now just another point of light in the darkness of space. Does life exist here? What new things can we discover on this world? These are the questions that this ship was designed to answer. This concludes the scanning and navigation training module. You are free to continue exploring if you wish, but please be aware that your progress will not be saved. Thank you, and goodbye. Well, I, I, I'm just stunned by this. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. So let's go here. Oh, and I turn that on. It's dark in here. Okay, we're still work in progress because we saw the little note there. Oh, flying camera. All right, okay, let, let's. Okay, so I've got the flying camera here. Okay, I'm back in the room. Okay, take another one. 
So this will be how you can search for bad things, I guess, on your ship, maybe, with the camera that you can fly around. Uh, okay, let's get out of that room. All right, we're done. We're done there. We're done there. I wanted this was the wrong one to go to. Yeah, this room. I, I love this room. Globe. I love this room because this is, I say, is a cool, cool room where Captain Picard broke his little ship that's back there again. Because obviously that was in the other demo that we had here. We had the briefing room, no, the conference room. Oh look, the, the little queue around there as well. You know. So developers again if you're watching this here's a little thought for you I would love as a game creator a content creator not a game creator a content creator to be able to access things and how wicked it would be to see the gentleman's pixel club videos running there or for any creator any bit of YouTube content that you want you know why don't you and it's just a thought just for just for a little Easter egg why don't you add a browser ability here that will only go to YouTube so you can't do anything horrible by putting any dodgy sites up or anything like that but it will only go to YouTube and it will allow you to browse YouTube videos or have an option where you can pump in URLs somewhere and when you click on play it will play it on the big screen hell you've got such a thing here and if you're doing multiplayer with this you can effectively have people maybe running whatever videos they want and as multiplayer where you're all there together sat there and enjoying this it sounds absolutely crazy but you know what you've got the ah, Merry Christmas you know you've got something so amazing here you've got something so amazing here so right okay um, we are done with this we're just gonna exit here and we are gonna go to quit to main menu and we're going to do start new mission. Okay, first launched in 2022, the Magellan class is renowned for being the first vessel that was designed and built specially for deep space exploration. You know, crew complement, full crew, flight ready, launch mission. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it's ready to go on. We don't have to spend hours doing everything else. Look, the gentleman, the gentleman has boarded the ship. All right, so. Here we are, here we are, here we are. We are ready, we are ready. Did you see that muscular pose against the wall there? All right. So, we are just going to do one quick flight. So, we we'll sit down here. And we are going to go to Sirius. And we're going to scan target. Okay, and we're going to pick this planet here. There you go. Just you on random. And we're going to send you to the helm. Up we get. And this will have NPCs as they say as well. So, you know, it will be awesome. It will be awesome. So, we, uh, you sense a target. And we engage there. We turn around. And we engage the FTL let's go and see another planet let's boldly see what is out there oh, this, this is just freaking amazing now if they add things like trading and stuff like into this as well the world is absolutely their oyster you know what I could see me being sucks for hours and hours into this game as we play the the gentleman's pixel club you know and yeah it's uh, the gentleman's pixel club starship on a journey and yeah the same journey that all of you can have but procedurally generated stuff you know this game if they hit everything they want i hope i live long enough to be able to see this game come out i truly do 
um, and obviously it's out now with what you've got and another reason I've gone for the Kickstarter as well apart from to um, you know be have to have a, a gentleman's pixel cut planet so to speak you know you get the tech demos of it it will give you the tech demos it is already busted through its funding level so you know you choosing to support or not is going to make you know no difference in terms of it will go forward as the usual risk that you have with kickstarters i'm not endorsing this but you know what from what i've seen now i have no problem in paying the money that i've paid for this you know th this is worth backing you know i wish i wish that i had enough money to back one of the higher tiers i really really do but this you know th this absolutely gets my vote anyway here we go we are going to be at this planet soon so what we're going to do we're going to have a look at this planet then we're going to have a quick walk around the ship um you know just uh, check a couple other places around that we may not have looked at we don't know how much is populated we truly truly don't you know we are nearly you know one hour Fifth, we're well, nearly one hour 20 minutes into this video here. You know, it is an absolute time sink. And even as a simulator, just to fly around and look at stuff in this glorious spaceship that doesn't have all the furnishings yet, is right. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. But on the alerts, on the alerts. We definitely need alarms. And here's another thought for you. And I do hope you devs are still um, this way through uh, the, the video that we've got. Here's another thought for you. When you've got the disco one, why not? Oh, look at that. That was so good. When you've got the disco stuff, we're here we've arrived when you've got the disco um, uh, option with the lights why not have an option and uh, this is gonna sound absolute nuts again but you know we're talking about customization we're talking about uh, and it's way away off but we're talking about silly little things but these are things to perhaps think about why not have the option if you want to to select from a folder that you can maybe have in a directory where it will bring up a list of mp3s that you put in there so you know we can go to the captain's chair where is the captain's chair there's the captain's chair we can go to the captain's chair sit down and we can look at this and we can click on disco mode and maybe have another option here where you can pick the mp3s that you want to be playing as we dance the night away at the gentleman's pixel club okay uh, where is it where is it where is it you know i i just love that i, I just truly love that all right okay so uh we have an option that we've not seen f4 for quick reference let's bring that up okay and these are all the keys so you know we know we can jump we know we can move we know we can sprint or crouch as well walk ragdoll okay uh, let's see all right so camera modes camera modes we haven't seen these okay multiplayer host we're not doing that bug report yeah all right okay glorious so let's get rid of that and look it even looks like lca us or lcas whatever it was in star trek on on the way they've done the font and everything so here we go we're going to toggle that off you know what we need to probably turn that off let's go to normal go to normal here and there was was it c for camera mode oh look look at this all right so another thing i would like to see and again this is just feedback because i'm playing this and you're getting the first impressions is where we can see all these names of these text fields and stuff like that you know here i think we need an option to toggle them on and off i really really do um you know especially when you look out the window if they could be toggled on off you know that would be good but now let's do another mode let's do camera mode again okay first person all right so what we're going to do now is we are going to go to captain's chair f to sit and we're going to put on the the alien virus one there we go and we are going to take a little walk around, turn our torch on, 
we were smack bang face into a wall we're not walking that way we're just going to go for a little walk around our ship you know we spent a few minutes just doing this you know table and uh, look views out the window oh look at that look at that there's a lot of looking at that nice all right so oh we want to go in here go down this is where we had the chair race deck C the science labs is this why we have an alien virus Creepy, creepy, but it's all okay because we know that we're alone. As Tiffany once said, I think we're alone now. Oh, look at this room, look at this room. Yes. Let's do some running. You know, the little sight, oh. The little signs they've got there as well, you know. Turn the torch off. Quantum mechanics. Oh, quantum physics. AFT. Yeah, all right. Let's go back to the main stairwell. Okay, this is all science-y, alright, okay. Lots of geek stuff happens here. I need one of those... Oh, there's a data centre. Ha! The geek in me, the geek in me, we've got to go and look at the data centre. Okay, that was there then, I guess. Yeah, okay, yeah, nothing in there yet. Alright, okay, so let's go down. You know, to be so engrossed in a tech demo like this, it's like, whoa. Hang on a minute. This is getting bigger as well. All right, so let's try and get to the park. So basically, we turn around and go behind us all the way to the end. Then we turn right. Then we turn right and go past crew habitation and then we turn left so all the way down to the end then we go right this must be crew habitation oh. but then I think okay this has to be the park Okay, so you know, obviously it needs populating, but is there a door there? But you know, the environment is just brilliant. Well, that's it. There's a lot to look at, there's a lot to be doing, there's a lot for them still to do. But you know what? This is the foundation stones of something absolutely amazing it truly truly is so let's go to the main menu I'm blown away by Starship Simulator I truly truly am this as a tech demo you know what it's gonna be friggin awesome and from a small development team that this comes from I'm stunned I truly am stunned 
I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm the gentleman. This is the Gentleman's Picks Club. We are a retro gaming channel. I'm not paid, by the way, to do this video or anything like that. But holy hell, you know, I can't wait to upload this so you can see this magical, magical experience. All of you stay safe. All of you take care. And I do hope, I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. Goodbye. Gentlemen's Pixel Club, the ultimate game channel on YouTube.